Well, good things come to those who wait. It's a well-worn saying in, in life generally, but in football it's rung true for North Melbourne and the big, broad-shouldered Ross Glendening. The gang is knowing the enormous impact that Glenn Denning could have on a game in a selection of key positions, was anxious to have him lining up with the seniors many weeks before his debut back in 1978. But a release couldn't be negotiated with East Perth Club and uh, Glenn Denning had to cool his heels at Arden Street, acting on some Saturdays as official runner for Ron Barassi. But finally the clearance did come through and it was a signal for the dashing Glenn De Denning, all 188 centimetres and 89 kilos of him, to display his all-round football ability. Yesterday at VFL Park, Glenn Denning gave North's finals hopes a real boost by hitting top gear at centre half back against Hawthorne. Eight times he held the Hawks up with marks, nine times he sent North forward with handball. 23 year old Glenn Denning unfortunately has been hampered by injuries but yesterday uh, finished with an ankle strain but he's ready to play a major role in deciding this year's flag. Here he is in World of Sport to talk with Bob Skilton. Ross almost 24, at 21 years of age how do you get away from a, a club like East Perth? Probably a bit of shrewd uh, administration from North Melbourne side, I think, Bob. Uh, and my willingness to come over and spend almost a year sitting out of football to prove that I really wanted to come to uh, Victoria and play with North Melbourne and uh, my club back home, East Perth, realising they probably had to let me go. Well, you came at an early age. Are you likely to go back to Perth at an early age? Well, I'd like to go back to East or Perth and probably East Perth at some stage, Bob. And uh, I'd definitely like to play a couple of years over there, perhaps towards the end of my career, so uh, I think I've still got quite a few years left in Melbourne. What difference is there in the game between uh, club games in Perth and club games in Melbourne? Probably because there's more uh, better players, should I say, on each side, uh, which puts pressure on in each game. You can't go into any game in Melbourne and have an easy game. There's always uh, a, an opponent that you'll be facing who's a very, very good player. Well, who has been your toughest opponent, let's say, at uh, centre-half back? Uh, well, I'd say probably Kelvin Templin on his day. Uh, I found uh, he reads the game very well, very good mark, and uh, if the ball is delivered to him well, he's a very hard man to beat. You've played numerous games at centre-half forward. Who, who was the best centre-half back you've met? Well, I didn't perform uh, too well against a couple of fellows, but I don't think it was because they played well, it was because I played poorly. So I really haven't got any uh, one particular player who I find more difficult than another. Centre-half back to centre-half forward, uh, you look as though you prefer centre-half back. I probably do actually, Bob, yes. Although, uh, as I've said before, if I'm playing well in both positions, I would prefer to play centre-half forward to get more satisfaction because it's a more difficult position to play. How much has the spell at centre-half forward, the games that you've played there, helped your game as a half-back? Uh, quite a lot because you appreciate... Um, how well the ball must be delivered to your forwards when you're up at uh, centre-half forward. When you go back to centre-half back, you try and use the ball as well as you can. So you think it may be an advantage to play everybody uh, at the other end of the ground well, at you, some stage? If you can get a spell at either end of the ground, it certainly helps your, uh, your versatility. Ross, so yesterday you got injured and uh, went to full forward, uh, kicked the goal. <laughs> at that stage you were really running around, as the expression goes, like a lame duck. What, what did you say to Kennedy when he kept uh, running up the ground Bouncing it, uh, running away from you. I told him to kick it as quickly as he could. <laughs> but there's another fellow in front of me who told him to keep running because I couldn't catch him. <laughs> and Ross, uh, you've now uh, probably got, uh, if Collingwood win their two games and mm. South Melbourne do not make it, Collingwood, how much of a psychological advantage would they have? They've beaten you now, apart from the night game, and right. Collingwood feel they won that uh, morally. Yes. When they cheated. Uh, what psychological advantage do Collingwood have at this stage? Well, to me, nothing. Uh, no advantage, but perhaps to a few players a slight advantage, but we've just got to overcome that and if we meet them in the finals, uh, which there's a fair chance we might do, we just have to overcome that and play our very best football. Thanks Ross and congratulations on well, your I'll game. Well I'll tell you what Bob, he's what, uh, 23 going on 24 and how would you like to be as fit as him and as good as that Bob at that age and as big? I wouldn't mind at all Luke. He's fantastic. Uh, there you are Ross, uh, uh, you've got the uh, Thomas Hardy Grand Reserve uh, Champagne, the bottle, and also you've got from uh, John Martin Motors, the uh, bearer of a uh, free lubrication, all change, plus a 22-point check, whatever that is, it's really great. And they're in Sturt Street, uh, South Melbourne, and also you've got the Tosca bag, and Tosca travels are always first class. Tremendous, thanks, Lee. Pleasure. Thanks,